Okay, this video is about uh, particle motion in two or three dimensions. So if we have a particle there that's traveled along the blue path, uh, starting at the origin, let's say at one second, we'll put the tail of the position vector at the origin and the head is where the particle's at at one second. And at one and a half seconds, the particle will be uh, at the tail of the r sub 1.5 vector and then we would have a change of position between 1 and 1.5 seconds that would be the change of r vector if we were uh, looking for average velocity we would define that again the average velocity is change of position over change of time and in this example, since our change of time is one half second, dividing the change of our vector by one half would be the same as multiplying it by two. So our average velocity vector would be the green vector, which I'll uh, place on the graph kind of in between where the particle was at at one and one and a half seconds uh, as the black vector. That actually would be uh, close to instantaneous velocity at that point. Okay example there's a there's a vector that's tangent to the path so that block block vector could be the instantaneous velocity at, at a later time and then here's a couple more uh, let's say this one was at uh, three seconds and that second one is three and a half seconds what would the average acceleration be well average acceleration would be change of velocity so pulling those two vectors out, putting them tail to tail, the change of velocity would be the blue vector. Okay, and then again, uh, average acceleration being change of velocity over change of time, we would need to divide our change of velocity by a half a second, which again would be multiplied by two, so we would end up with the pink vector being our average acceleration so if I put that in the graph, you can see from uh, the particle at three seconds is going to the right horizontal, and at three and a half, the black velocity vector is showing that it's slowed down because the vector is not as long. It's also m moving to the right and up. And if you'll notice, the pink vector would be uh, responsible for that, the acceleration. In other words, part of the component of the pink vector is to the left which would be slowing down the uh, particle and then the vertical component of the pink vector is what's making it change directions between three and three and a half seconds okay if we uh, look at the bottom of the screen in general that's our position vector and since the velocity is the derivative of a position, we can just take the derivative of each component of the position vector. In other words, the derivative of the x component, the derivative of the y component, and the derivative of the z components with respect to time. And acceleration being the derivative of velocity, which would be the second derivative of position, uh, is also listed. And then in uh, any dimension, the speed is the magnitude or the length of the velocity vector, which we can always square each component of the velocity vector, uh, add all those components together, and take the square root. Okay, going on to uh, uh, another uh, example, I'm going to work uh, chapter 4, number 12. Uh, but I want to first take a look at constant acceleration. If we're in one dimension, you can see at the bottom of the screen, uh, we have our uh, constant acceleration formulas that we developed. But if we're in uh, two or three dimensions, we can look at the top of the screen. We can actually use vector notation. We can talk about R of T. Uh, the position vector is your position at time zero vector plus your uh, velocity at time zero vector times time plus one half the acceleration vector times time squared. And then correspondingly, the um, 
velocity at any time, the velocity vector would be the initial velocity vector plus the acceleration vector times time. Uh, that would be showing position and velocity vectors all in one statement. If we looked at it component by component, we could start off uh, with the x coordinate at any time would be our x coordinate at time 0 plus our velocity at time 0 in the x direction times t plus 1 half our acceleration in the x direction times t squared. When we were in one dimensions we didn't subscript our velocities and accelerations but uh, since we're going to have y and z components uh, it's the same formula we'll just be subscripting velocity at time 0 in the x direction as uh, the case right here and acceleration in the x direction. And then on the velocity uh, equation, the velocity in the x direction, uh, we'll record that we have the velocity in, at time 0 in the x direction times the acceleration in the x direction. And then correspondingly we have the same uh, thing going on where we could say y equals the initial y coordinate plus the velocity at time 0 in the y direction times time plus one half the acceleration in the y direction times time squared. Uh, and then the rest follows the same way, the velocity in the y direction, the z coordinate at any time, and the velocity of the z in the z direction at any time. Okay, uh, this is going to wrap up, I think, the first video, and then I'm going to make a second one, uh, working chapter uh, 4, problem number 12.